and welcome to Adventure Home. My name is Sarah and I'm an environmental educator with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Each week Adventure at Home will bring you new ways to recreate locally and safely outdoors no matter where you live in New York State. This week's theme is birds and we're going to be exploring backyard birding. It's easy to identify birds and you don't need a lot of materials to do so. You may want to uh, bring a piece of scrap paper and a pencil to help sketch your bird for, to help you identify it later. I use a few different ways to help me to identify a bird. We'll use this American Robin as an example. I look for the size of the bird, the bird's shape, the color, and the bird's behavior. Taking a look at our American Robin, we notice that this is a fairly decent sized bird. In fact, this bird is often used as a comparison in order to identify other birds. If you're brand new to birding, you may not know the relative size of different birds, and it's okay to use to compare your bird to the size of something you know, like a flower pot. Once you get an idea of the size of your bird, take a look at its shape. What can we tell about the shape of our robin? I noticed that he has a rounded body with long legs and a long tail. I also noticed his long pointy beak. Were there other things that you noticed about the shape of our robin? How about his color? What did you notice first about the robin's color? I noticed the orange belly. Then I noticed the gray wings with the black head and bright yellow beak. I also noticed that he has a bright white eye ring. Our robin is a male. If we were looking at a female, we wouldn't notice as much of a difference between the color of her head and the color of her wings. Do you notice anything else about the bird's color that stands out to you? Finally, we'll take a look at our bird's behavior. What is our bird doing? In the case of the robin, we might find him or her running through the grass, foraging for a meal. Some of their favorite foods are earthworms and fruits. Another bird might be observed flying from tree to tree or singing from a telephone wire. These behaviors, along with our color, shape, and size observations, will help us to identify which birds we're looking at. Another common backyard visitor is this bird. Do you recognize this bird from your neighborhood? Let's take a longer look using the different categories we discussed. Can we determine this bird's size? By itself, it's a little hard to distinguish, but if we held it up next to the robin, we can tell that this bird is larger than the robin. Now let's take a look at the shape. Is there anything you notice about its shape that stands out? You might have noticed the large crest on its head or the large, strong beak, great for cracking seeds and nuts. Or maybe you noticed the broad, rounded tail. These characteristics can help you identify this unique bird. Now let's take a look at the color. What colors stand out to you on this bird? We have a blue head and back with a white belly. Then I noticed that there's some black near the eyes, as well as a black necklace, and some black on the wings and tail. This bird is another common backyard visitor, and as you may know, we're looking at a blue jay. Males and females look alike, so it may be hard for you to tell which one you're looking at. You'll often find these guys perched in a tree calling loudly. They're very smart birds, and you may catch them foraging for food. When they find nuts or seeds, they will hold them in their feet and peck at them with their beaks. They will cache their food to eat later, so next time you see an oak tree, it may have been planted by a blue jay. Another bird that you may be lucky enough to find in your backyard is our eastern bluebird. This bird is special in New York because it is our state bird. These birds prefer open fields, meadows, and even golf courses, but will occasionally visit backyards, especially if you put up a box which they like to nest in. If you visit your local nature center, you may find a bluebird trail that is a series of boxes set up to help bluebirds find homes to raise their young. Let's take our bluebird and compare him to the last bird who was also blue. 
First of all, we'll take a look at their size. Our blue jay is quite a bit bigger than our little eastern bluebird. Now how about the shape? What do you notice about the shape of our bluebird when compared to the blue jay? You might have noticed the crest on the blue jay, which the bluebird doesn't have. You might have noticed that the bluebird's beak is much smaller and narrower than the blue jay's beak. What can that tell us about their favorite foods? As we discussed, the blue jay likes to eat nuts and seeds, including acorns, as well as some insects while the bluebird prefers to eat insects. His thin beak is perfect for picking up spiders, caterpillars, and grasshoppers. Did you happen to notice the tail of the bluebird? It's much shorter than the blue jay's tail. Although both our bluebird and blue jay are blue, our bluebird also has a rusty color on his breast and throat. Female bluebirds are a little bit more subtly colored and look a little grayish. It's easy to see why we choose such a beautiful bird as our state symbol. Another frequent visitor to the backyard is this bird here. Bright and colorful, this is a welcome visitor year round. This bird is smaller than a robin. Take a look at its shape. What do you notice about its shape that makes it stand out? Maybe you noticed this bird's very prominent feather crest. Perhaps you noticed the downward pointing tail. How about the thick orange beak? Great for cracking seeds like black oil sunflower. These characteristics can help you to identify this bird. Along with its shape, you might notice its bright red color. There aren't too many birds in New York State that are brightly colored red, so that narrows it down quite a bit. Our bird here has a bright red color and a black mask and bib. We're looking at a male. A female of the same species looks browner overall with reddish wings, crest, and tail. This bird is our northern cardinal. You can find cardinals visiting feeders and spending time in shrubs nearby. You may even notice this bird attacking its own reflection in a mirror or window. This is territorial behavior for cardinals and both the males and females will do this. One last bird that we'll talk about today is this little guy here. Comparing him in size to a robin, you'll notice that he is much smaller. Let's take a look at his overall shape. He's kind of chubby and has a big head and short neck, which makes him look very cute. What do you notice about this bird's color? Maybe you first noticed the white stripe on his cheek. Maybe you noticed his black cap or his white and buffy belly. In this species, the males and females look alike. Whatever you noticed, part of this bird's coloration is also part of its name. This is our black capped chickadee and he is a common visitor to backyards. You'll often find him visiting the feeder grabbing some seed and flying away to enjoy it somewhere else. This bird will often visit as part of a mixed group of birds. So if you see these guys, look around. There may be some other birds to identify and enjoy. Now that we've identified some common backyard birds, you may want to continue birding with your friends and family. One way to find out more about birds and activities you can enjoy is to visit ibirdny.org. On that site, you can find the 2020 iBird New York Challenge. It's a fun activity for the entire family to challenge their observation skills and find birds that live in your area. Visit iBirdNY.org for more information about the challenge and great bird resources. Thank you for joining me today, and please continue to adventure at home responsibly and safely. Happy birding!